Hey, I'm Michael Waddell, and I'm excited that hunting season's drawing near like a lot of you guys. And on this X Mark Backyard Life, I want to go over some overlooked hunting tactics that's helped me. Some of them are very simple, but I have proof that they work. And I'm telling you right now, I'm excited to share these things with you. Here's a tactic I think gets overlooked, especially in the South, even in the Midwest. So obviously, if you look behind me, this is my personal farm. I got some overgrown area. This is an overgrown pecan orchard, and you can see an old faint lane right here. These lanes were created by me through either a skid steer or a bush hog. Now I've got them whooped into shape. I can actually use my laser Z, my X mark there to kind of clean them out, and I do it every year. I like to come in here in August or September. So basically, all this habitat behind me is great bedding habitat and these deer obviously I've got food plots all back north of me or in this case south of me and these deer will get up and they start flowing this way well I've created a hub almost like a wagon wheel to where my stand is behind me and I got these lanes there's one here there's one there there's one here there's one there so as these deer get up at this thick stuff typically they're going to get up and rather than come through this thicker stuff where they're bedding they're going to use these lanes and typically those lanes always lead right to my tree stand so I found that these deer like to travel the least resistance. They're just like me and you. We're gonna take the trail. We're gonna take the sidewalk so many times. So if you're in the Midwest and CRP, uh, things like that, if you can actually bush hog these trails or take your lawnmower, it works great. Unbelievable how quickly the deer start using these mowed trails. Here's what we got and we left with going into deer season. Look at that beautiful trail. You create a trail for the deer. It's so thick, thicker than even meets the eye. Come right here. It's like spaghetti junction. So imagine an ant bed that all the ants are living in. They got all these little paths and trails. So check that out. That goes all the way back to one of the best bedding areas on my place. Thick stuff all around. They're bedding on the north end back there. They get up. Do they want to walk through all this? or will they take this trail? There's my stand right there, check it out. So basically, picture the spaghetti junction. Got a trail here, trail there, trail here, that my little dog's running up now. So obviously here it is August, come in September, this will be a heck of a spot. And when these deer get up from this thick stuff, they'll just follow these trails down. Now. One tip I'll tell you husbands, if you're using your prized lawnmower like your X-Mark, you might not want to tell your wife you're doing this heavy lifting with it, but it proves it will do the job. And you've got to obviously, you can lift that deck up and down right there with your, with your, your foot, but also you can set the deck a little higher, plenty of horsepower, and it does well. I bush hogged these the first time, but now I've got it down to where I can just use my X-Mark. So heck of a tactic. Sometimes we overlook it. We don't think about it. It works, I promise. So lastly, I want to talk to y'all about shot placement because, you know, if we get a deer in range and we get them tricked, all of it falls short if we can't put that good shot, whether it's with an, uh, an arrow, you know, a bow and arrow or a gun. And so one thing I think gets overlooked more than anything is where to hold on a deer, especially with archery gear. Over the years, if you spend a lot of time shooting 3D targets, you will see that the vitals, which are pretty accurate, this ain't the perfect anatomy of a white-tailed deer, but it gets you definitely in a ballpark. We end up spending most of our time shooting dead center of this target. We celebrate it, we make bets with our buddies out on the range, and we're just wearing this out, getting solid tens. If you're shooting ASA or IBO, then obviously we got these 12 rings, 14 rings, whatever. So obviously, when you're shooting at wildlife, obviously you're not trying to get a 10 ring, you're trying to get lungs and heart to put them in the back of Chevrolet. So what I found, if you spend all your time shooting dead center, of this deer that when you get out into the wild and you got a deer at 30 to 40 yards especially the drop is going to be crazy even with very quiet bows and good veins that are typically quiet this deer is going to drop sometimes drastic so i have found if you're shooting dead center i would say 90 to 95 percent of the time you're going to either hit the deer high out of the vitals or you're going to miss him high 
So a lot of these shots you wonder and you look back that you didn't have a camera, didn't have a tacticam on your bow, you'll sit back and think, how did I miss that deer? Because I felt like I was aiming right on them. It was a big old doe in a food plot. Well, what happens, and we have video evidence that 90% of the time these deer drop a lot. So if you're holding here, you shoot over them. So I've made it a good habit of coming right up this leg and I settle my pin right here. So what I'm doing is I'm always shooting for a heart shot. I'm always trying to find this baseball size heart. Imagine where the anatomy of this deer and his heart lies and I'm trying to blow it out. Very rarely will I hit him in the heart. Usually I hit him in the double lungs and that deer will drop that much almost every time. So that is a tactic I found to be overlooked. Always hold with a bow and arrow once you find the range. Try to concentrate on that range and hold lower thirds and I promise you it'll be more successful. And we have so much video evidence that proclaims the truth in this. If you're a rifle hunter, it's simple. Pull up tight on these shoulders, let her rip. Especially if you're shooting a 30 caliber, 308, 30-06, even these 270s for your average white-tailed deer with some good horny ammunition, right there in the shoulder, let her rip. A lot of times you're dropping in the tracks. I don't pull back into these back lungs with a rifle. I try to tack the shoulder. So that's just some things I found that's helped me on the final part of closing the coffin to put a whitetail in the back of your truck for your family to eat. I was worried at first hit him a little low, but I think I blew right through him perfect. Yes, sir. That is a buck I'd shoot in Iowa or Kansas or anywhere. I, I'm just, I just emotionally just, I, I can't even tell you how I feel right now, man. I, I know anybody who watches or hunts deer with a bow, it, it, it's, it's like surreal, like it's almost like a, a dream to be holding a buck like this. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this segment, and I can promise you this, I have been so proud to be part of this Exmark Rural Lifestyle. You know, these vignettes, man, it's been a lot of fun to share some of these little simpler things that we sometimes overlook on the TV shows. And if you like this type of thing, be sure to visit exmark.com backyard. I mean, there's all kind of cool rule tips and tactics from everything under the sun. You won't be disappointed. So signing off, Michael Waddell right here for Exmark. Happy hunting.